My name is Beatrix Haggard, and I am an assistant professor at Oklahoma State University. I'm in the plant and soil science department, which means that I teach a lot about crop production, and I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about what I'm doing for my class here at Oklahoma State. I teach four or five classes. Some of them are going to be hard to translate because they're completely hands-on. Um, but for these classes, what I'm doing right now is trying to get all of my content moved on to Canvas, and that's what I wanted to talk about right now. So if you are currently in the uh, thought process of what am I going to do, I think a big thing to think about is taking a step back and also thinking about what the students are going to think when they log back into this course if you are on spring break right now. I tried to move everything that they would need to know for this moment to the top of the course instead of adding new stuff at the bottom. And however you do that, I think it's fine. Um, just keep it consistent, hopefully, especially if a lot of us are not going to be coming back in person, potentially, because we don't know yet. I sent them a plan of what we would be doing over the next, for sure, two weeks um, that we know that we're going to be out any assignments, any quizzes, things like that, just so that they're aware, especially if we have people that don't have that period of internet, they can still have those dates and know when stuff is going to be coming up. I also made a video that goes through that plan as well, because I know a lot of students don't always want to read through a document. It doesn't matter what grade level you're in, you pretty much get the same response. One thing that I'm going to be trying to get that face-to-face -face and personal interaction with students is offering a Zoom conferencing time period. If you've never used Zoom before, um, there's even a free Zoom option that will give you 40 minutes of a meeting for up to 100 people. So even if you have larger class sizes, you could actually split up your class into multiple groups. Um, thankfully, we have a license here but I have 169 students in one of my classes, so in that case, I would just have to set up like two 40-minute sections um, for them to be able to log in at those times. After that, I started to put everything together for their first set of lecture material that they're going to have. If you're used to a 15-minute lecture or an hour and 15-minute lecture, try to break that up if you can. Um, if you just can't spend the time to try to break that up into smaller sections, I would definitely let students know at the very beginning of it that it would be recommended for them to sit there, take notes while they're watching the video, and try to just go through and watch about seven minutes at a time if they, if they can go that long. So just self-breaking it up um, is one thing that I let my students know, because I know a lot of professors will probably go ahead and put an hour-long lecture, which is fine, just as long as those students are breaking that up themselves. Don't forget about YouTube. This is a great time. If there's any interesting videos that you like to show in class, just like start conversation, go ahead and put those in there for our soils lecture. I put one in about landslides when I try to talk about why soils are so important and it's important to know where you're building your house and how much our soil affects everything around us. So any of those, it's just a nice way to break up the lecture and give them something else to watch. And if you're in Canvas, you're able to put that video in and it actually embeds into Canvas so it doesn't take them into the wormhole that is YouTube if it takes them out to that site. And then don't forget about quizzes. So in this intro class, I just have one quiz per chapter because that's something that we kind of talked about as a class before all of this started so I could get some feedback from everybody. Um, but on my 2000 level course, I actually have a short quiz after every little bitty video. Um, just trying to keep them more on top of the content because it is more in depth compared to an intro level course. And I just wanted to make sure that they were actually getting everything that they needed out of that. Um, and so each one of these videos is about anywhere from four to eight minutes long. And then it has a short quiz. And so this one has four questions in it. So it doesn't even have to be a lot. It could be two questions, just something um, so that they can actually start to think about what they're doing. 
I also included some another video for scouting because we're talking about scouting and IPM measures in this class. And then a reading because I mentioned something that some of the students might not know what it's referring to and so I wanted them to be able to go and read about that if they're not aware of what that topic is because that would probably be one of those things that we discussed in class. So if there's things that if you've taught this subject matter before that you know students typically bring up then maybe go ahead and find a reading because there's a good chance that some of those students might like to go and read that material as they're going through this. Um, Hopefully this is a brief overview. The only other thing that I'll add right now is if you're trying to bring a little bit of cheer to this, um, in Zoom, you can actually go through and change out your background. And so by doing this, we'll start a new meeting. I just changed mine yesterday and I'm so excited because I changed my background into my greenhouse. So, oh, I can't show it. Sorry, because I'm using the web camera. Mm, fail on my part. <laughs> but hopefully, um, if you want to know how, I can probably show you that. That I can do. So if you go into Zoom on your computer, you can go to Virtual Background and then choose your Virtual Background. And this is the one that I've chosen, which is a picture of inside my greenhouse. And hopefully that helps cheer up my students as we start doing online advising soon for all of their fall classes. So um, I'm gonna try to do some more of these just to help out with some of the different things that I'm doing over all of this quick online. I've never taught an online course fully. I put material online, but even I am not like an online teaching guru. So, and I have labs that are outside in the field typically counting wheat tillers. So this is definitely going to be a transition for me as well. So y'all have a great day and stay well.